Well, it can be whatever the world wants to call it. And it does seem strange at first when you hear aging as a disease. But when you look up the definition of what a disease is, it's a condition that reduces function, eventually many diseases causing death. And that's exactly what aging does. It turns out the difference between disease and aging is simply that a disease happens to less than half the population and aging happens to more than half of the population. And that's, a, that's an arbitrary cutoff. And I argue in, in my book that because we don't regard aging as, as a disease, we've neglected it, at least for the last 200 years. And that's led to a lot of problems in our healthcare system and in our lives where we're spending more and more time in a state where not all of our body is kept young for longer, our brains in particular. And I think with this new approach, if we were to define aging, at least as a medical condition, it would change the way we research and develop drugs for most age-related diseases. Human beings and members of other species, especially animals, age and die. But there is no biological law that says we must age. For example, some mammals live over 200 years. Some simple animals are potentially biologically immortal. Animals in the genus Hydra have a regenerative ability by which they avoid dying of old age. But what if humans too had an ability to live longer and healthier? The notion of radical life extension no longer belongs to the realm of science fiction. David Sinclair is a professor of genetics at Harvard Medical School, a co-director of the Paul F. Glenn Center for the Biology of Aging. He believes that the pace of aging can be slowed and even reversed by a variety of approaches. Sinclair says that aging is caused by epigenetic changes, abnormalities that occur when the body's cells process extra or missing pieces of DNA. This results in the loss of information that keeps our cells healthy. This information also tells the cells which genes to read. In his book Lifespan, Why We Age and Why We Don't Have To, Sinclair describes the results of his research theories and scientific philosophy, as well as the potential consequences of the significant progress in genetic technologies. Right, well, hormesis is essentially what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. You could possibly say what, what doesn't kill you makes you live longer as well, because what we discovered first in yeast cells and eventually in animals and now in humans, we found that these enzymes called the sirtuins, these are protectors in the body, and they do a lot of good things. They protect uh, cell identity, they repair DNA, they boost energy. So we discovered that, but then what we realized in the 2000s was that these genes and the enzymes that are produced from them are turned on by hormesis. And what that means is any anything that puts the body in a state of perceived adversity. Right? You don't want to actually damage the body to be able to live longer and be healthy. You want to give the impression that times are going to be tough. So being hungry during the day, exercising, these are all things that tell the sirtuin genes to come on and to protect the body. At present, researchers are only just beginning to understand the biological basis of aging, even in relatively simple and short-lived organisms, such as yeast. Sinclair, however, makes a convincing argument for why the life extension technologies will eventually offer possibilities of life prolongation using genetic engineering. Sinclair and his team recently developed two artificial intelligence algorithms that predict biological age in mice and when they will die. This will pave the way for similar machine learning models in people. The loss of epigenetic information is likely the root cause of aging. By analogy, if DNA is the digital information on a compact disc, then aging is due to scratches. What we are searching for is the polish. Every time a cell divides, the DNA strands at the ends of your chromosomes replicate in order to copy all the genetic information to each new cell. And this process is not perfect. Over time, however, the ends of your chromosomes can become scrambled, much like the data on a damaged compact disc becomes unreadable. These tiny errors pile up with age, causing cells to malfunction and eventually stop working altogether. However, the progress in genetic engineering has provided that these changes can be reversed even at the cellular level. 
and it is possible to restore the information in our cells, thus improving the functioning of our organs and slowing the aging process. Unlike traditional medicine, nothing is lost when correcting these errors. The information in our cells is just modified. Could a simple pill be the solution to our aging problems? Sinclair is currently focusing on pharmaceutical development that could treat aging. One of his more recent molecules of interest is called NMN. It is found in every living cell and boosts levels of the NAD plus molecule, which adds as a coenzyme in many critical processes in our body, including cellular energy production, DNA repair, and certain activity. A new paper published in the scientific journal Nature identifies how this essential molecule is taken by mitochondria, the cell's energy-producing symbionts that decline with age. A wide range of age-related conditions including cancer, obesity, cardiovascular disease and diabetes are all connected with the lack of NAD+. Growing old is characterized not only by the obvious biological changes in the body, wrinkles on the skin, graying hair, but also by the gradual decay of cells and body tissues. This is a result of DNA damage that gradually accumulates in cells and results in increasing number of cells with minimum functionality. Another way to slow down aging is through healthy diets and fasting. Sinclair practices calorie restriction, eats a mostly vegetarian diet and tries to avoid sugar and carbs. He also exercises in the gym on the weekends and then sits in a hot sauna before plunging himself into an ice cold pool, because according to him, temperature extremes also kick our cell's survival instinct into action. Sinclair tracks his biomarkers regularly and takes vitamin D, vitamin K2 and aspirin. However, he points out that he is not a medical doctor and is not recommending anyone do what he does. So we now know when you exercise and when you are hungry, your NAD levels go up. And it turns out that as you get older, your NAD levels go down. It's just a correlation, but what we've shown from it, numerous animal studies, rodent studies, an increasing number of studies in people is that what's going on is the NAD is turning on the body's defenses against aging through a group of enzymes that we worked on and have essentially spent 25 years figuring out, they require NAD as well. So the hormesis mediators, the enzymes that we think provide the health benefits of diet and exercise are, are responsible for the longevity that you get when you lead a healthy lifestyle. Now. It's interesting to pause on this because we used to think that just running would make your blood flow better and being hungry, you know, you lost weight and that's why you lived longer. But actually what I believe and more and more people also believe is that NAD and these other things that raise NAD are working because they're they're actively turning on the body's defenses against aging. And it's not a, it's not a passive effect, it's not a coincidence. It's really just telling your body Times are going to be tough. Fight against this onslaught. Ray Kurzweil is also taking many supplements to extend his life. He predicted that the singularity is coming in 2045, and he plans on living long enough to see it. Kurzweil actually believes that his healthy diet can help him live longer. Sinclair, on the other hand, is not so sure about immortality. According to him, human beings are never going to become immortal unless we somehow upload our brains to the computer, which is a very hard thing to do, considering the brain is the most complex thing in the universe. Unlike Sinclair, who is trying to find a way for humanity to extend life to 150 years, biomedical gerontologist Abri de Grey doesn't see any inherent limit to how long it will be desirable to live. According to him, in about 10 years, we will achieve the degree of life extension with late onset interventions. We will keep people more functional both mentally and physically at an old age. Once technology is available, nearly everyone is going to want it. Of course, there's going to be a minority of people who think it's better to live more naturally in some way or other. We have parallels like that in society today, like the Amish for example. Elon Musk on the Joe Rogan Experience podcast said he would rather eat tasty food and live a shorter life. What do you think? Let us know in the comments section.